Because when I'm looking for a reliable source on cancer treatments, I definitely turn to the people who think that cucumber stays in the stomach without moving. So this video is about peaceful cuisine. It is a recipe channel, a vegan cooking channel run by Ryoya Takashima. I'm sorry, I actually looked for videos of him saying his name, pronouncing his name. I couldn't find any. Not that that would have helped me at all. <laughs> anyway, he has over 2 million subscribers. He actually has another channel that's more travel oriented. His videos are really beautiful, just beautifully shot, beautifully edited. He's very, very talented. His recipe videos are really, really chill. He generally doesn't have any talking, no voiceover or anything. He even uploads a like second version with no music either, which my misophonic ass cannot handle at all. I can barely handle the ones with music, but the ones without, it's like the sounds of everything, the food, like some of the squelching kind of noises is like amplified. It's not really amplified, but it's not as dampened, I guess, by the music, right? With the music, at least it's dampening those sounds a little bit, but without it, it's just, man, you just get the the full force of those, those awesome like stirring sounds. <laughs> Oh, I still can't listen to either version with headphones on. <laughs> so yeah, it's an apt channel name, right? I mean, it's pretty soothing, peaceful, calming content. It's quite different, I think, from the vast majority of like recipe vlog stuff, particularly like vegan and health recipe cooking vlog type stuff, which tends to have more of an um, kind of like an energetic vibe to it, oversaturated colors and guys eat this food, you're gonna be healthy as shit type of thing. I don't know, no one really talks like that, but in my head, in my head, that's how like everyone talks because it's funny. I don't know what I'm talking about. Everything's bright, the music is upbeat, you know, it's kind of loud, that sort of thing. So this is kind of the antithesis of that peaceful cuisine is. So why am I talking about this channel? It seems like a perfectly fine, you know, vegan channel that's like actually pretty popular, right? Too many, two million subscribers. That's got to be one of the top uh, vegan channels in terms of subscribers. Well, about a week ago, he uploaded four new videos, some juice recipes, quote unquote. It's hard to call them recipes because, I mean, other than the green juice one that actually has several ingredients, there's like one or two ingredients to each. There's literally one that's just orange juice, another one that's just carrot juice. One of them is carrot and apple juice, getting fancy. He uses this super crazy pure juicer, that's the name of the brand, uh, that actually has a hydraulic press. It's a beautiful machine and it does seem to work really well. If you look at this video, which is essentially a commercial for pure. I don't know if he was paid for this. He doesn't say if he was in the description, so I'm going to assume that he wasn't. But I mean, that's that's what he is. He's just kind of demoing the machine. And you can see when he shows the pulp, like it's, it's pretty dry, but it's huge. It looks like it takes a long time to set up and just to work with all the different steps involved just to make juice. And I'm sure cleanup is a bitch. Oh, and it's over $2,000. But those are just minor issues with these videos. If he wants to make a million juice recipes that are just one ingredient juices using this insane juicer, go for it. I do not care. The actual problem is that all of these videos are promoting Gerson therapy. It's actually really confusing if you don't know what Gerson therapy is. I mean, even if you do know what Gerson therapy is, it's pretty confusing, but there's no mention of it in the actual video. There's no voiceover for these. Again, like many of his videos, um, the only way you know it's promoting Gerson is from the title. Uh, and then the title is, you know, put up briefly in the video. And then also in the description, he links directly to the Gerson Institute. And then he also links to the book that's written by Gerson's daughter, Charlotte Gerson. This is an affiliate link, as you can see by the actual link. If you read the whole link, you'll see like peaceful cuisine in there. So he is making a small amount of money from any sales that are made through this link. Probably something that should be disclosed in the description. So Gerson therapy, according to the Gerson Institute, it is a natural treatment that activates the body's extraordinary ability to heal itself through an organic plant-based diet, raw juices, coffee enemas, and natural supplements. Maybe that's why his latest video is about roasting coffee beans. <laughs> should we, should we prepare ourselves for a like how to put coffee up your ass tutorial? <laughs> 
Get excited. The Gerson Protocol was created by Max Gerson. Apparently, he was an actual physician. He started using this protocol to treat uh, patients with migraines and even tuberculosis, and then eventually he moved on to cancer. Basically, you eat a shit ton of fruits and vegetables, 15 to 20 pounds, organically grown, so super affordable. Most of it is juiced. You're supposed to drink up to a glass every hour, up to 13 times a day, so 13 eight ounce glasses of juice a day. The rest is in plant-based meals with grains like cooked vegetables, baked potatoes, salad, um, Hippocrates soup, which is made of potatoes and other vegetables and garlic and onion, no salt, no spices, no protein, delicious and filling. I'm sure. You're also supposed to take a bunch of supplements. Um, this therapy is vegan or mostly vegan. So B12 actually makes sense here. The rest of them a little bit more questionable. And you've got to love the and more <laughs> at the bottom there. And of course, the coffee enemas up to five times per day, possibly castor oil as well. The reason for this is essentially detox or auto intoxication. This is what it used to be called when this was actually a mainstream concept back in the early 1900s. Like much of the Gerson protocol, the need for coffee enemas is based on an understanding of human cancer and physiology that was becoming outdated a century ago. But that's not all to Gerson therapy. There are a, so many more rules. <laughs> so many. Uh, you can't have berries. You can't have pineapple, avocados, nuts, seeds, or salt. You can't have cucumbers. Because when I'm looking for a reliable source on cancer treatments, I definitely turn to the people who think that cucumber stays in the stomach without moving. You also can't have anything with meaningful amounts of protein, so obviously no animal products, uh, but also no legumes. No oil except for flax oil. Celery is okay to eat, but never juiced. No fluoride either, so no fluoridated toothpaste. And root canals. No root canals. Root canals are bad. They actually recommend immediate extraction for people who are in good condition. Okay. There are also rules about what you can and can't cook in. No pressure cookers, steam cookers, cookware made from aluminum or with a nonstick surface. No microwaves. Surprise, surprise. Also, no tap water. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. If Gerson therapy can really heal cancer, arthritis, heart disease, allergies, and many other degenerative diseases, there must be just a mountain of rock solid evidence proving this, right? They wouldn't tell people to avoid typical treatments like chemo that have been proven to work and have actually saved lives based on anecdotes and poor quality research, would they? Spoiler, Gerson therapy is based on anecdotes and poor quality research. No studies on Gerson therapy in animals have been conducted, which is actually a good thing. Thank God no animals have had to die for this outdated garbage. The vast majority of human studies, quote unquote, aren't studies at all. They're case reports. A case report is just a detailed account of something that happened to an individual. So for instance, this example of a woman who got very ill after consuming a bunch of peppermint oil, the report is just detailing what happened to the best of their knowledge and also speculating why it happened, right? So why the peppermint oil put her into a coma and almost killed her. Case reports can be very useful. They can lead to research, right? If a bunch of people are saying, hey, this thing happened to me after I did this, after I took a supplement or after I took a drug or after a medical device was implanted, that can be studied. But you generally don't offer advice based on case reports and you certainly don't offer a cancer cure based on them. I mean, you, you can, obviously, at least in the US, you can like sell sell books on it. If you want to make real money though, you need clinics. And in the US, you're you're going to have trouble doing that long term. You're probably going to get into some trouble at some point, but don't worry, there's always Tijuana and Budapest. So other than the anecdotes, other than these case reports, one trial has been conducted. It doesn't tell us a whole lot. For one, it's not on Gerson therapy, but Gerson therapy as an add-on therapy or as an adjunct therapy, um, it was not the primary care that the patients were receiving. The primary care was whatever prescribed conventional regimen was required after surgery. And even still, 
the results were not statistically significant. A retrospective conducted by the Gerson Research Organization, also not very useful. It apparently showed a survival advantage for certain melanoma patients treated with Gerson therapy, but according to the National Cancer Institute, the number of patients was too small for a statistical comparison, and the analysis did not include 52 patients lost to follow-up, which obviously could have significantly changed the results. A few naturopaths tried to follow up with patients who went to the Tijuana clinic. They didn't have access to medical records, so they had to rely on interviews with the patients. So, of course, there wasn't any, like, detailed information on their condition or on the um, stage of cancer, the progression of tumors, anything like that. Anyway, at five years, 17 of the 18 patients had died, and the one who was still living was not disease-free. No conclusions about the effectiveness of Gerson therapy can be drawn from any of the studies reported above. And aside from the positive Gerson therapy anecdotes, there are negative ones as well. Jessica Ainscoff, the wellness warrior, she had a very rare form of cancer. Uh, she eschewed conventional treatment, which in her case would have been amputation of her arm. She eschewed that in favor of Gerson therapy. Did it save her? No. Her mother as well, her mother had breast cancer, and again, she did not receive conventional treatment. She instead chose Gerson therapy. She died two and a half years later. To give credit where credit is due, the Gerson Institute does admit that Gerson therapy has its limits, that there's no guarantee that it will cure cancer. Yeah, no shit. No oncologist has ever said that chemo is guaranteed to eradicate someone's cancer. There are cancers with very poor five-year survival rates, even with treatment like chemo. The difference is that these treatments have been extensively studied, and they continue to be studied. And with people, more and more people, going through these treatments, um, getting diagnosed earlier and earlier, and with treatments being improved upon, we see five-year survival rates going up. The same cannot be said for Gerson therapy. And of course, we have to talk about side effects. Of course, treatments like chemo have them. No one's trying to hide that, right? But so does Gerson therapy. And of course, they are trying to hide that. They want to make it seem like you're just going to get better. It's amazing. Just do this protocol. Everything's fabulous. Of course, there are horrible side effects. Number one, as I already said, it's super, super expensive. You are spending a lot of money on fruits and vegetables. And also, the fruits and vegetables, like, have to be organic. The crazy juicer, right? I mean, juicer's already a good, like, masticating juicer is not cheap. But you're supposed to get these crazy grinding juicers, the two-step juicers that are crazy expensive, the coffee enemas, the supplements. In terms of like nutritional deficiency, assuming that you're actually drinking all of the juices, particularly the green juices, the four eight ounce glasses of green juices every day, you might be able to meet your mineral and protein needs just because, again, the sheer amount of the greens that you're getting in. But there's still the issue of electrolyte imbalance, which some case reports have associated with Gerson therapy. Also, fluoride, not using fluoridated toothpaste increases the risk for tooth decay, obviously. And finally, coffee enemas. Coffee enemas can lead to dehydration, infections, loss of bowel function, possibly even death. So unsurprisingly, a lot of viewers were pretty shocked to see um, Peaceful Cuisine, I'll just call them that, <laughs> to see Peaceful Cuisine promote just something that's is just such an obvious scam. You know, this isn't like your typical alt-med quack YouTube channel. There are plenty of those. This is, it's just a cooking channel. It's just a vegan cooking channel. Some were concerned that he's actually sick um, and that he's using this therapy himself, and that's why he made these videos. Uh, but he did respond to one comment just saying that he's fine. I couldn't find anywhere him explaining why he put these videos up. There's this comment from someone asking him to please leave health problems to health professionals, and they talk about a friend who died because she didn't seek actual treatment. Um, he liked the comment for some reason. Maybe that was a stray click. I, I don't know. It's really confusing. Um, the whole thing is really confusing to many viewers. It just seems to have come out of nowhere to a lot of people. However, if you look at some of his content, including some content on the Peaceful Cuisine channel, it's really not that surprising. 
So on July 30th, 2019, Peaceful Cuisine posted this video, why I take these supplements. He takes these two that are mostly milk thistle. They're a blend, but they're predominantly milk thistle. They're supposed to help cleanse the liver. He started taking them because he had some uh, skin issues, like a rash that wouldn't go away. And it got better after he moved. He thought it was due to air pollution. It got better after he moved, but still wasn't perfect. So he started taking these supplements because he thought that he was having some like issues with toxins, so he started taking these to help remove toxins from his body. His skin did eventually clear up, which he acknowledges may not be due to the supplements, but he does believe that it was because of the supplements, because they helped him to detox. We know little about whether milk thistle is effective in people, as only a few well-designed clinical studies have been conducted. Results from clinical trials of milk thistle for liver diseases have been mixed, and two rigorously designed studies found no benefit. He also mentions taking the milk thistle blend in this video, this What I Ate Today from April 2019, along with bentonite clay and charcoal. These can be useful in the treatment of some poisonings. They can help to remove like certain compounds from the body, but obviously this would be in like a medical setting, right? With medical professionals, there's no evidence that these are useful long-term. In fact, they can inhibit nutrient absorption. And one brand of bentonite clay actually contained high levels of lead. He also takes MSM. I don't know why he takes it. There are a host of reasons that people take it. Also, that hydraulic juicer that he uses, the, the pure one, the crazy huge machine. As I briefly mentioned earlier, Gerson Therapy actually recommends a two-step juicer like this so that you can have the fresh healing enzymes in the raw fruits and vegetables so that they're preserved in the juices or whatever. And this specific one, the pure juicer, is actually one of the three that they recommend. And also, if you go to the Pure website, you'll see that they promote Gerson therapy. Like when they talk about why Pure, they talk about Gerson therapy and the benefits of Gerson therapy. I mean, what came first? Like Gerson promoting the Pure Juicer or Pure Juicer promoting Gerson? I would guess the former and then like, you know, Pure took advantage of it, right? I would guess that they noticed that a lot of people were buying their juicer to use for Gerson therapy. And then they were like, hey, maybe we can make some more money off of this by mentioning on the website. Maybe we'll get some more sales, but who knows? Also, what if this is how Peaceful Cuisine learned about Gerson? Maybe he didn't learn about Gerson and then buy the juicer. What if he bought the juicer <laughs> because maybe he just thought it was a cool machine. I mean, he's obviously kind of a, a foodie, right? Maybe he just thought it was cool and he bought it and then saw the like Gerson propaganda and now he's into Gerson therapy. Holy shit, that's really depressing. Point is, I wouldn't be surprised if he has believed in or, you know, agreed with Gerson therapy for quite a while. It's obvious he's believed in dubious health stuff for at least a few months, actually going back farther than that, at least since January 2018, uh, according to this What I Ate Today, where again, he talks about taking like MSM, stuff like that. And look, the vegan community has a rich and wonderful history of, you know, promoting and being associated with quack shit. I mean, look at this video. Look at what was recommended to me while I was researching for this. Cancer gone in eight months, courtesy of Plant-Based Science London. If I were funny, I would have a really, really good joke about that. I'm not saying that every person who uses milk thistle or MSM is a Gerson therapy believer. However, if you believe that a rash is actually good because it means your body is ridding itself of toxins, are you more likely to believe that Gerson therapy is good because it rids the body of toxins? Absolutely. The last thing I want to talk about before I die of heat stroke. <laughs> it's so hot down here. I'm sure you can see the lovely little sweat mustache I've go got going on there. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is kind of the problem that I see, a big problem that I see with um, like YouTube and, and social media, stuff like that, stuff that isn't curated, right? Like TV is curated. So obviously there are actors who have some insane beliefs. There are actors who believe in Gerson therapy and anti-vax, right? Someone like Jenny McCarthy is like the first name that comes to mind. But it's not as easy to find out about it, to find out about these views, unless you follow them on social media. Um, and like, if they don't have a, a 
PR team or like a good PR team. Seriously, it's it's so confusing to me how these celebrities keep getting into trouble. Like, don't you have people, don't you pay people to tell you like what to do <laughs> and how to like interact with the public and not to do those things? I guess if you are actually running your Twitter account, it's kind of hard because you just, you just tweet shit, right? But yeah, it's, it's harder to find out about the stuff unless you are following these celebrities or, you know, unless the media decides to like broadcast it. But when you're looking at YouTube and people who are like YouTube famous, it's a whole different thing. You can have cases where someone just posts recipe videos and then all of a sudden, bam, quack cancer cure. It's his channel. He can do whatever he wants with it. He can literally just delete it if he wants to. Jessica Biel doesn't have that power. She can't start talking about the dangers of mandatory vaccines on Pete the Cat. She can on Instagram though. I don't know what my point with that is, honestly. I just kind of, I was just thinking about it. And it's it's interesting to me, kind of the, the wild, wild west of, <laughs> of social media and YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and all of these places where we just kind of have full control. Not full control, obviously. There are some things that YouTube won't allow. You can't show titties, right? If you show some nipples, you're going to get in trouble and get your shit demonetized and maybe even your channel removed. But you can do this. <laughs> you can just promote. Oh, man. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing where our priorities lie. Anyway, um, it, it's a shame, you know, that again, this is obviously such an overall really lovely channel that I think, I mean, obviously a lot of people appreciate. He has 2 million subscribers. It's nice to see something different. It's nice to see a different face too, because look, I mean, come on, the vast majority of recipe channels in general, but I think especially like health and wellness and like vegan recipe channels, it's mostly, mostly pretty young women, you know, <laughs> like it, it's nice to see a different face and a different just style, you know, it, it's nice. And so it's, it's a real shame to see a, a channel like this, man, it's not even like, I don't know, acupuncture or something like who gives a shit, you know, <laughs> like, I mean, unless you're saying acupuncture cures cancer or something, but like, who cares, you know, it's probably placebo, but hey, if it makes you feel better, I don't care. But, you know, to promote just one of one of the worst alt med things out there is just man, it just it just sucks. He seems like a really really nice guy. He doesn't seem like he's hard-headed about any of this. He um I mean even with the supplements he acknowledges that hey, it might not be because of the supplements. So Hopefully he's reading the comments. I know it's already been a week and it seems like he liked that one comment and he still has the videos up. So, but I don't know, maybe, maybe he'll choose to, maybe he'll choose to remove the videos or at least just not make any more, you know, <laughs> just start going back to you know, his, his regular content. I made a joke about the coffee beans, but I don't, I don't think that had anything to do with coffee enemas. I think he's just showing how he roasts the coffee beans that he likes, you know? So that's it. I don't really know what else to say other than YouTube is a, a crazy, crazy place. It's going to be interesting to see where everything leads in the next few years and how like the FTC, how the FTC gets involved with all of this. I mean, we, we still have a lot of channels, a lot of content, uh, pretty obviously being sponsored and nothing's done about it. I mean, look with the Christina essential oil video, which she did finally remove. Hallelujah. For those who haven't been following along, uh, she removed comments from the video, which, you know, not, not great because now there's no opportunity for people to learn that, Hey, this can actually be harmful. You know, um, there's no opportunity for any sort of conversation, but she has finally removed the video. And also it turned out that buried way down in the description, I, that's my bad. I should have looked farther in to the description, but you know, typically if you're sponsored or you are promoting from someone buying a product that you're talking about, right? You would say that pretty close to the top. And you know, I like to assume that when, I like to assume that people are being good and truthful, right? So I didn't even think to look farther down in the description, but man, way, way, way down, like under promoting her book, her app, her retreat, uh, I think like Sun Warrior Protein, just a host of stuff. She had a little link that was like, hey, get doTERRA oils here and join my team or whatever. So yeah, she is actually a doTERRA 
rep, which again, you know, this came to mind because talking about the FTC and people not announcing sponsorships and whatnot, that's not technically a sponsorship. But again, if you're saying in a video, hey, I highly recommend you use these oils and not explicitly saying, hey, I also make money <laughs> if you use these oils, if you go by this link and like get these oils or join my team, like that's um, not great, I think. So point is, um, number one, I'm really glad that she removed the video. Awesome. That was kind of my big hope for the video. Um, I didn't want to say it in the video because I don't want to jinx myself, but it has happened in the past. She removed a previous B12 video that I talked about. She removed an interview with Doug Graham that I commented on um, just saying like, hey, this guy's kind of awful. Maybe don't do that. And she removed the video. That was awesome. So it has happened in the past. So I was really hopeful and she did. So that's cool. And also again with the FTC and just not disclosing um, financial conflicts of interest, right? Uh, it's going to be interesting. And also uh, kids in videos, you know, YouTube has taken steps, quote unquote, they removed comments, which at first I was like, yay, but now I'm kind of like, I don't know, you look at channels like um, Ellen Fisher's, who obviously, she, you know, is very kid heavy, right? They're in like, basically every video that she puts out, I think. So her comments have been removed because of that. But now you don't have any sort of dissenting voices. You don't have anyone saying like, hey, actually, this diet doesn't look great or, or whatever, or hey, sunscreen's important. You know, not that you saw many of those comments on her videos when she did uh, have comments enabled. So I don't know. But yeah, I was just kind of thinking about that with a lot of these kind of alt med uh, family YouTube accounts, like maybe it's not a great thing. Just like with Christina's video, removing the comments, like that's not great. You want to at least have people saying like, hey, actually this isn't great. Point is, we're, I think we're going to see some interesting things with that and how the government is going to handle all of these kids obviously working <laughs> and not having to abide by like child labor laws. Hope some of these family vloggers are ready because the hammer's gonna drop. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen. Hope they're ready. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, that's cool. Support the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. And I will have a video soon-ish, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing next. Comment below what video I should do if you have any suggestions. I should probably say that every video. Yeah. Okay. I still can't listen to either version with headphones on. <laughs> In fact, the uh, the Green Juice Gerson video starts with him, like, I think he takes the greens that have, like, been washed so they're all wet, and he, like, slaps them against the cutting board, and it's the most offensive sound I think I've ever heard. <laughs> and I wasn't expecting it, right? I just started the video, and I had headphones on, and oh, God. It's such a weird thing to have. It's something I didn't realize I had until um, a few years ago. I mean, certain sounds had all that always bothered me, but I had never really used headphones that much except for music. And I started using them to like watch YouTube videos and stuff. And that's when I started to notice that certain sounds just like, you know, what the hell. And I also noticed that certain voices, like even... <sighs> If someone has like a really good quality mic and they're close enough to the mic and they have a certain voice, like a certain resonance to their voice, it can bother me. It's, it's like it, it's like it gets into my head, you know, it's like, it's like creepy crawly feeling like there are bugs in my head or something. It's just terrible. Like I wish I liked ASMR. I wish I could, you know, I don't know, get whatever you get from that stuff. Is it sexual? I don't think it's sexual. I think it's just like a, ooh, it, it feels good. But man, for me, no. I guess for most people, it's probably like whatever. Like it doesn't affect you one way or the other. And then there are just like a few people who are like me. And then a few people who are like, yeah, dude, I'm into that.